We begin with the new developments involving Power City. Could it be the breakthrough that hundreds of union workers have been waiting for? Today, for the first time in nearly a month, ExxonMobil and reps from the United Steelworkers Union came to the table to talk about ending the lockout. Good evening, Southeast Texas. It's certainly a sign of progress in a lockout that's lasted longer than most expected. Now, remember, it was back on May 1st when 650 union workers were locked out of the plant. Exxon says they continued to meet in good faith with the union, but no additional proposals were exchanged. The current offer is for a new contract that would last for six years through January 31st of 2020. 27. It would provide refinery specific wage increases as well as eliminates senior bidding for jobs. It also adopts other union approved language for layoffs and onboarding. Exxon Mobil says they'll meet again next Thursday. We've reached out to the union as well for their reaction to today's meeting. We'll keep you updated on there as we learn more. New tonight, rebuilding after the storm. Images like these still haunt students and teachers in Vider. Harvey destroyed the district's middle school and Oak Forest Elementary School, but they're finally ready to move forward with rebuilding thanks to some help from FEMA. So FEMA played a really big role in this rebuilding process. Vider ISD says it received nearly $19 million for the project. 12 News reporter Christiana Ramos is live in Vider, where the groundbreaking just happened for that new middle school. Well, it's a distant memory. This patch of dirt here, that was the old Vider Middle School. But great things are in the works. The community and the school district came together earlier today to celebrate the groundbreaking of a new rebuild project. Tropical Storm Harvey destroyed Vider Middle School in Oak Forest Elementary, and it's taken three years after the storm to get the engines running and the funds to rebuild. Students have been without a regular classroom since. Our fifth grade students are housed on our high school campus in portable buildings. Our sixth grade students are housed on our junior high campus in portable buildings, and those campuses are not near each other. The district received over 90% of funds from FEMA. That's $18.6 million, and the district is paying the additional from their fund balance. G&G Construction has already began rebuilding Oak Forest Elementary. The new designs for the school structure will include lifting the building 18 inches off the ground. This is higher than most flood situations, and the district is confident the elevated structure will defend against future flood situations. Back out here live, the new schools are expected to be finished beginning 2022. Christiana Ramos, 12 News. All right, all dry out there tonight as we check the storm tracker forecast for you. A live look showing partly cloudy skies, hot and humid. The roofing 911 sky cam here in Beaumont. Really just what you'd expect at this point in mid-June. Chief Meteorologist Patrick Vaughn joins us. And Patrick, we are staying dry for the next couple of days. It looks yeah. like it, uh, and it also means that high temperatures will inch upwards a bit, uh, maybe into the mid-90s here in Beaumont by Sunday. And those heat indices, I think, will be mainly into the lower triple digits across the area. Currently looking at partly cloudy to partly sunny skies. Temperatures are in the mid 80s triangle to near 90 in the lakes. Nothing on radar. Heat indices mid to upper 90s triangle closer to the triple digits in the lakes area. Future cast not showing anything but one little speck of a shower over the next few hours this evening up in the lakes. So we'll go with 86 at 7 p.m. here in the triangle down to 79 at 11 p.m. It looks like dry weather expected the next couple of days. But scattered showers and storms return by Sunday. More on that extended forecast coming up on 12 News. A crime alert tonight. It's been nearly three years since Derek Kane was hit and killed while working on the back of a trash truck in Orange. Well, tonight, the driver police blame for that crash is back in jail. Police say Valen Rose Falk had her bond revoked because she failed a drug test. She's charged with intoxication manslaughter in the 2018 death of Kane. She was free on bond, but had been ordered to wear a drug patch as a condition of her release. Recently, that patch tested positive for marijuana, so she's back in jail. She's scheduled for a pretrial hearing in July. Now, those that knew Kane said he was always singing, always happy, and just a great person to be around. Kane was a member of the 409 chapter of Music Group in Silsby. He was only 28. Now to a developing story here at 6. Call it an unemployment crackdown. Texans on unemployment can no longer claim fear of COVID as an acceptable reason for turning down work. 
The state's unemployment agency ending that exemption starting June 26th. That's also when out of work Texans will stop receiving an extra $300 in federal jobless benefits. According to our news partners at the Texas Tribune, Governor Abbott also cut off a lifeline called pandemic unemployment assistance, which extended unemployment to gig workers, self-employed people and others who do not traditionally receive unemployment benefits. As I've stated before, I'm running for re-election to be your lieutenant governor in 2022. And I'm especially proud to have the support and endorsement of President Donald Trump. All right, there you have it. That's Dan Patrick announcing his run for re-election next year. That's the video he posted to YouTube saying that Republicans will crush the Democrats again in 2022. That's a quote. He vowed not to let Democrats turn Texas blue. He already faces a challenge from Democrat Mike Collier. Collier pushed back today saying, quote, Dan Patrick has proven that he doesn't care about the needs of everyday Texans and he refuses to lead on the issues that Texans care about the most. Well, right now, there's a new sense of excitement over on Pleasure Island. A weathered fishing pier and boat launch could soon get a facelift thanks to grants from Texas Parks and Wildlife and the city of Port Arthur. These two grants together total almost $150,000, and they'll be used to pay for planning and construction on this project. 12 News reporter James Grant was down on Pleasure Island to get the scoop on these much-needed upgrades at the popular landmark. After taking a beating from recent storms, a fishing pier and boat launch on Port Arthur's Pleasure Island could be getting an upgrade soon. The Southeast Texas bass hole, man, the best thing to do out here really is just fish, really. So we come out here maybe like twice a week. Juan Gracian has fished off the Pleasure Island Pier since he was a kid. He loves coming out to the popular Port Arthur Honey Hole, but he, like others, sees the need for upgrading the pier. And we've been needing lately all the storms hitting all the time. You know, it's getting a little rough out here. You can tell it's kind of breaking down. Help is on the way in the form of two grants, one from Texas Parks and Wildlife and the other from the city of Port Arthur. These grants, which come out to roughly $147,000, will ultimately be used to upgrade the pier and neighboring boat launch. And we just want to make it, like you said, safe, aesthetically pleasing, and just there for the community to come and anybody to come and tour. Chandra Alpo with Port Arthur Parks and Recreation says it's important to maintain and preserve the area, which has been hit hard by recent storms. With that area as beautiful as it is, with the natural ecology from the fishing to the bird life to everything, we need to keep continuously maintaining and developing that area. Gracian says he's looking forward to the upgraded fishing pier and boat launch. It's going to be awesome for everybody that comes out here because that's really what we're really known for. People from Houston, everybody really just comes down here just to fish. Alpo says they hope to complete upgrades to the boat launch and fishing pier within the next year or two. On Pleasure Island, James Grant, 12 News. All right.